Okay, so I was planning on doing a different thing, which honestly some of the code that I have in here is already starting to build towards the next thing of having connections. But for the terrain, for the procedural terrain for this time, I wanted to address a glitch that I had previously, one that I didn't recognize that I had. Um, so when we ran the force graph, we would get this, where it would move all the objects around, they would get balanced around, we would see this the terrain kind of level itself out. And I had the mesh height, I had the mesh height and the mesh strength that is being applied. And it was being applied at 100%. Um, but so that meant that when we reached the boundary edge of this, when we reached the edge of it, that we would effectively see um, this stuff drop immediately from whatever height it was at straight to zero. So when I run this, it's kind of a, a almost choppy in how it moves. Like it's just moving from one to the next, just cutting them out or putting them back in place. And that's effectively how the terrain is operating. Now, there was a glitch in this. Let me show you this, because uh, on this one, I tried to apply the strength, um, which let me put this in here. Uh, and I realized that there was a mistake that I had in here uh, that I should have put in before. OK, so we're putting in applied strength. This is my first attempt at fixing this one. Uh, when I run this, let's try it. So it's still running fairly choppy. Oh, yeah, the, right now I'm using a, uh, an animation curve. That's this value right here, the blending distance. So if I choose something else like, say, this, then we end up seeing a much more smooth transition. So what effect does it have on the surrounding world? Now, this, there's obviously something mistaken here, like what's going wrong with this? Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll choose a pattern on here that has a more abrupt cutout. So when I'm running this, Oops, wrong one. That one. And stop. Right there. See how this circle over here? This circle obviously is a full circle, but it's cutting right into the middle of this one, and so much so that the edge pops up when both of these are requesting that the ground is flat. So I wanted to indicate how to resolve that. Um, and effectively, what was happening is I was taking whatever strength I was getting. So what our strength before was originally just one. If we were inside the unit circle, then it was one. Um, but I wanted to be able to set the mesh strength so that we would get more out of it, so that we'd be able to use this uh, with multiple circles applying to affect the same area. So the problem is, is that when it's evaluating, it does evaluate every node in the force graph for whatever might affect this. And assuming that it does affect it, it's going to take its position. So whatever the last one that's in there is, is going to be the last one that affects its height. And it just cuts off whatever happened before because I'm using equals. Now, if I just say plus equals, so okay, we'll add them together. That's not going to resolve it entirely. So we see cutoff, and the cutoff is because we've gone beyond one, the maximum height that the terrain can allow. And so when we're running this, we see that the overlap effectively cuts each other off and goes invisible, goes to zero, basically, as far as the terrain is concerned. All right, so uh, basically we're going to do almost the exact same thing where we add it, but if our applied strength is greater than one, so we keep adding it every time, but if the strength goes over one, then we just set it back to one. That way we, we level off our terrain here. All right, back into Unity, and now let's see how this runs. Okay. Now we get this much smoother transition of the terrain. It kind of melts fragments of the terrain away. Now this also affects certain things like um, before our settings were set so that the radius would cut into the ground enough that any nodes close to each other would show up. But now we don't quite get that. And that's because the circles, the circles certainly get to where they need to. But with the smoothing factor in place, that doesn't really work as well. So that means that for, uh, let's see, what was it? Island, not island. I need the 
strength of each one of those circles. Move four, scaling, no. Wait, scaling, was that it? No, that's not it. Where did I actually hide this variable? Not there. Layers, no. Force graph visualizer, no. Terrain. Obviously, I have it somewhere, but I don't honestly remember where. Radius. Oh, here it is on the force graph layer. 86. So if I increase that, we eventually get to the end, and you can see the effect of it is to smoothly transition from one, one terrain type to another. So we smoothly transition from where we are into the world around us. Now, if it's a flat section to a flat section, then that's just a slope that completely matches the curve that we have here. So I can change this curve to say something jagged like this, and then let's run it again. Uh, oh, scroll up there. You can see each of these are there and they're affecting each other, but none of them have exactly what they want out of this. Oh, oh, one thing. Uh, with the curve, it actually has to go the opposite direction here. So the top over here is what is supposed to be at one. One is the, th this first word starts on the timeline zero. That's effectively the center point. And we say when we're at the center point, we want that height maximized to what we're telling it to go to. That is the point of importance on this. And then everything else after the fact, let's see, do I have another one? Let's do this. Add key, add key, add key, sure. So I do some modifications, I guess, like that, and then like that. I'll just put something jagged in here. And one here. A wave. That should be recognizable with, by its ripple pattern. And let's run it. So, you, yeah, you can definitely see the ripple pattern here. Uh, it's basically creating like these... Actually, that's not a bad idea. It still produces a ring for the ones right next to it, but when you have a whole bunch of these next to each other, the interference patterns, that's what we're basically seeing, an interference pattern. That creates a whole new way to look at this. As long as the radius is actually set up about the right size, we should get things that produce overlapping radius. So these circles, now they don't cut into each other enough. That one needs to be a little farther over. So if I were to change the radius to say, there we go. I can adjust the radius and manipulate this on the fly. It's kind of a cool effect to see that ripple pattern happen. There. Anyway, so lots of different effects, lots of interesting stuff, but I did want to make sure that we could smoothly transition from one type to another. All right, and then oh yeah, let's adjust the radius again, which radius adjust, when we adjust the radius, also accounts for slope as well. So if I change this, the slope by itself, if the processing is not happening anymore, um, doesn't change, so we have to adjust the radius to see them. And this, of course, is the backwards image. This is a pointed hill. But I guess in this case, it's downward. Um, and then last one on this, let's see. This is the one that I've been using. So if you use a slope like this, uh, I usually add another key so I can rank this up and go left linear. And then let's adjust the radius. So we get this hill and then the flat rise area. Anyway, none of those are exactly what I want. I'm going back over to uh, this one. That's the default that I like right now. Okay, so in the next video, I'm planning on going directly from line to line, from point to point, so that I have a path that is guaranteed. So even if I have the radius set, the radius and distance between the nodes set so that they're farther apart and don't touch on the circles, that we can still guarantee a flat path leading from one to the other. All right, talk to you later.